Honestly, see, now I'm, about, now I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry. Because I'm like, I bought 13,000 twice. So I had 26,000. Right? So let's say I have my 20, I feel a tear in my eye. 26,000. Times, like, what is GDP? I don't give a fuck. That's like a, my taxes. And when I go to, when I go to find my taxes at H&R Block, I say, hey, I know GDP of America. They're going to be like, that's cool. You owe me $12,000 for taxes. The Bamboo Project Podcast starts in three, two. Welcome to the Bamboo Project Podcast. I decided I want to become a billionaire doing what I already love to do every day and documenting my journey to get there. I figure I'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to. My name is Donovan Gray and this is how I'll turn my life into a living. So first, I want to start off by giving a shout out to the Bamboo Project family. My goal is to see, is it really possible for someone like me to be worth a billion dollars? That's the goal. And my plan to get there is creating a thousand millionaires, including myself. We are currently streaming on all major streaming platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor. You name it, we on it. And if we not on it, we about to be on it. For everyone listening to this podcast and not watching it, you can find us on YouTube at The Bamboo Project. We have over 300 videos on our channel. Dr. Sabi inspired cooking tutorials. We got that. Travel and lifestyle vlogs. Got it. Makeup. Got it. Hair growth. Got it. Real estate. Got it. Basketball. Got it. It's everything us. We post something on our story pretty much every day. And you can find me on Instagram at Donovan Gray. D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y. And my phenomenal, beautiful, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne. A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. Now, how many times have you been told you have to focus on one thing to be successful? For whatever reason, that never really felt right to us. I think I'm great at more than one thing, and that is why we have six different projects. We have the food project. We have the music project. We have the clothing project. We have the fitness project. We have the sports project, and we have the Bamboo Project Podcast, which you are listening to right now. This may be your first time here, and if it is, welcome to the family. But for everyone else, this is chapter 2, page 59. This podcast has multiple different segments, okay? Four to be exact. We have the life update. It's a weekly update on what we went through last week. Episode playback. It's a recap of last week's episode and the things I feel like I could have done better to make it a phenomenal episode we have donovan's questions a philosophical question that i donovan gray thought about earlier in the week and i said you know what i want to bring it on the podcast and see what you guys think about it and then we have the topics of the day all video and audio timestamps will be in the description below today is may 4th and it is 401 p.m uh i don't know i think we started last week at exactly four o'clock i think too may 4 55 this is a life update comes first on the podcast now i have multiple videos about my um that somebody commented the word for it too on youtube what it's called oh my god he he called it a ah, fuck he had the proper he had exact term i was looking for i can't remember the word i feel like i with an s it wasn't trilogy it wasn't survey sock that's what he said I think that's what he said. I'm looking for it, but that's... Yes. Saga. Okay. So, I have a lot of videos. What, what's his name? That one Reether. That one Reether? Okay. Shout out to him. Because like I said, that's the word I was looking for. And I have to remember to use that word. Saga. Now, I have multiple videos about my <laughs> Dogecoin saga on the podcast and in my life, right? I have my ups. I have my downs. I had a lot more downs than I had ups. I honestly only had one up, and that was like two weeks ago. So... I have kept my money in Doge, right? Kept it in there because I'm like, you know what? I think that this is a good place to keep my money for now. I, However, I do think that there's some weird stuff going on with Doge, right? So actually, I'll tell you what I learned today. My friend was, uh, he's more into Doge than I am. He kind of follows Reddit forums and he kind of, he's, he's definitely more into what's going on than I am. I'm kind of a macro analysis of what's happening. So he was telling me that Dogecoin is majority owned or it's largely owned by Robinhood. If you guys are familiar with that, uh, it's a company you could trade stocks on pretty much with no money or a little bit of money. So he was saying that he was trying to sell his money 
or sell his Dogecoin to get his profits out of the investment. And Robinhood would not allow him to sell his money. Now, I'm like, okay, that's not uncommon. They've been doing that a lot lately, which is technically supposed to be illegal because I, if I own Dogecoin, your job is as a broker to sell it when I try to sell it. You can't really tell me, oh, I can't sell it when I try to sell it. Buying can be a little bit more understandable because they're going, you know what? We don't want people buying into this right now. Things are getting kind of crazy. But if I own it and I want to sell it at a higher price, and you're telling me I can't, you're pretty much taking away profits from me from not allowing me to sell it at that time. So he was showing me today that it's happening again. So, because it went up crazy. Man, every time I think about it, I can't think about it because if I do, I'm going to get like, I'm just going to be depressed. But when I first found out about Dogecoin this year, it was at 0 0.04 cents. I don't think it was at 4 cents yet. It was at 0.04. It had to be. It was. Because people were talking about trying to get it to 1 cent. Bruh, Dogecoin is at 60 cents now. And I had bought Dogecoin. I think I had thousands of Dogecoin at that time, which would be crazy. Like, I had a lot. I had a fucking lot of that shit. And I sold so much of it. Oh, my God. Ah. Uh... I don't know how much I had. I'm going to check. I'm going to check right now to see how much I mean, how many actual coins I had. Because I fucking, now this shit is worth 60 cents. So now when I buy one, it's like I got to spend mostly, a, damn near a dollar to get one. So now I think, bro, I'm going to see how many I had. I had to have mad doge back then. Um, I had, let's see, my chest. I'm going to tell you what I'm at now, though. But I'm still, I could have been way better. Better. Than I'm at now. So. My chest is kind of like. I don't I don't really know if I want to see how much I had. Damn bro. I had. Oh my god. I mean. Yeah. I had 13,000 Doge coins. 13,000 Doge. So it was. And that, when I bought it. It was at. Oh when I bought it, it was at 7 cents. Okay. So. That means that it's worth. Uh, let's see if I had third. Let me see the math. What? How much would I? How much money would I have right now if I bought it? And honestly, honestly, see now I'm about now I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry. I'm about to cry because I'm like I bought thirteen thousand twice, so I had twenty six thousand, right? So let's say I have my twenty. I feel a tear in my eye. Twenty six thousand times. What is it at now? Ah, uh, I had 26,000 Dogecoin times. Each coin worth 50 cents, so let's say times, times 0.57. I don't think that number is right. 14, that number's not right. So if each coin is worth 26, is how do that, Melissa? If each coin is worth 57 cents, Oh, okay. So, okay. Yeah. I would be at $13,000. That's what I'd be at. Yeah. I'd be at, and I'm not as mad. I thought it was going to be at like 42. So 13 is not like, it's, it's, it's a lot, but it's not like, damn. Cause okay. Here's why. Here's why I say that. So what I did was I sold my Dodge, my Dogecoin as an idiot, did some stupid shit, whatever, whatever. I put money back into it a while ago, right before it started like going kind of back up. No, I'm lying. I left a thousand dollars in there. I think so. Right. So I left a thousand dollars in there. So I'm like, right, we're going to see what happens with, with the doge. Right. And the shit went up. And now I currently have, if I check, I just check right now, I have $4,100. And this happened within the span of two months of me not doing anything. I left the money in there. It's at $4,000. Right. So it's at 60 cents. And when I bought it, it was at seven cents. So it's a really huge return. And I'm just like, damn, this is crazy because that's almost 10 times. Yeah. Right? 10 times my money in two months. And the, here's, the, here's, here's the... I'm going to put you on some game. Right? Or at least how I'm looking at the situation. I don't think that Dogecoin is a real product. Right? And when I say that, it's because I feel like it's very valuable in its current state. Because the value that comes with Dogecoin is the fact that everybody knows about it. It's similar to Tesla where it's like... Tesla is not actually worth what it's what the stock says it's worth, but because everybody knows about it, people are buying into the actual brand name of it, and that does have value. But the actual product itself does not have. There's actually a Tesla product, so that's that's good. 
So you can actually buy the Tesla product because you can buy the Tesla stock based off of the product if you like the product. Dogecoin is not really used in the real world. People are starting to try to use it, but it's kind of like if everybody decides the hype from this is gone, right? Then Dogecoin doesn't exist anymore. If people decide that, oh, I don't really want to invest in Tesla stock, that's fine. Tesla will people that own Tesla stock will still be making money because the product itself still makes money. Dogecoin does not make any money. So my play right now is to keep my money in there. I'm pretty sure there's probably several more years of this, to be honest with you. Um, I'm going to say probably, I don't know. I can't even speculate. I have no idea how to speculate it, but I'm going to say probably three, five years, maybe three, five, seven years, somewhere in that range, right? Of Dogecoin going up, going up, going up. Now, the thing about it is it doesn't even have to go up that high because Bitcoin's at $50,000. So all I'm looking for right now is the return. As opposed to when you buy Bitcoin, you're looking for the to actually have a product. You're like, okay, I want to be able to use Bitcoin in the future because it's going to be what money is based off of at some point. I don't think there'll ever be a point in time where money is based off of Dogecoin. I don't think that ever happened. So because of that, having Dogecoin is more than it's just having a stock that goes up depending on how popular the stock is. That's what I think. Um, I really don't think it'll become worth more than... Uh, I mean, damn, you know what's crazy? If it's worth more than a dollar, that means that it's, that means that, that's crazy. If if the stock price goes up past a dollar, that means that it's worth more than a dollar is. Like the, the US dollar. I think that's crazy. Hmm. Yeah, that could definitely happen. That's crazy. Because Bitcoin is worth 50,000 US dollars. That's insane. So... All right, so here I said, this is my plan. Right now, I'm putting about $50 a week to Dogecoin, and I want to get that number up, probably like $100, $200, depending on much money I'm making, because I want to use this leverage to be able to reinvest it into uh, real estate, because I want to turn this pseudo stock into something that's tangible, so that I can say, hey, I'm getting paid every single month, because at the end of the day, right, something that people don't really understand about stocks and how they work is you don't have any money until you sell the stock so the stock could be worth a quadrillion dollars and it could sit there and if you don't do nothing with it that's it you just have a that's all you got right now i i hmm yeah right if you don't sell it you don't have no money maybe you get a loan based off how much money you have in stock and you have to put your stock as collateral possibly but for the most part you can't do nothing with the money until you with the stock until you sell it so i want to sell the stock so that i can buy some more property i don't know if you guys know this me and melissa we are in <laughs> listen we're real estate investors now we own property and it's currently being fixed up right now if you want to see how that looks you can see a picture or a video on our page on my page i don't know if it's on your page or not and you can see kind of how the house looks currently it's not it's not like demolished yet but they cleaned it out um and what was the other thing my my guy uh thomas and philly told me they're doing demo right now as we speak so i'm gonna get a picture soon of the house demo with no walls nothing i'm like damn that's gonna be crazy like we're gonna see the house with no walls in it that's gonna be so crazy so like i said you already know the plan we're trying to be billionaires on this side that's the goal we gotta be a millionaire first to get to a billion so we, 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 we hype, but as far as, as far as those goes, I would suggest people to just invest something to it every week, not because you, it's going to be worth something in terms of being able to use it out in the real world, but more so as you can sell it at a higher number because right now it's, it's kind of bonkers. It's, I think today I might've, it might've went up like, I think I made like $800 today, like just today. And that's crazy. Cause I didn't, I didn't work. So if I wanted to, I could sell it, but I'm not because that would be stupid. Um, I learned my lesson already. So today I made eleven hundred dollars. What? Yeah, today I made one thousand one hundred twenty-six dollars just by having money in in freaking in Doge. So at this point, I'm like, I'm gonna leave it in there. I'm gonna keep putting fifty dollars every week. If it's going up percentages like this, honestly, the percent it went up. Let me just double check that too. The percent it went up today was thirty-seven percent in one day, which is which is ridiculous. The stock market on average is supposed to be doing like seven to nine percent a year. So technically, if I put my money in here for a day and took it out, I'm doing better than the stock market is for the whole year. That's insanity. That real that that's not real. So a lot of stuff we see right now is not real. Now, 
I'm actually gonna get into that later. Uh, hyperinflation. That's definitely some shit you gotta get into. So that's why I'm at with Dogecoin. Uh, now, <sighs> I'm trying to think. We we don't. This is definitely not. This is this is never the plan. We're never gonna do this. But we do have enough money to. No, we don't. How much money do we owe on our rent? Do you know? Mm-hmm. Like twenty thousand. So we owe about twenty thousand dollars on our rent. We have not paid rent. We don't have the money to afford the rent. That is why we're trying to like reinvest our money because we think it would be silly if we took all the money we made, put it to the rent. Now we're broke and we get evicted and now we have no investment at all. So we're like, all right, boom. At least if we invest the money, it gives us some returns. We could pay off the rent. Now Melissa was actually uh, court ordered to go to uh, for this situation because. Right, I don't live here. They, for whatever reason, they only contact Melissa about eviction stuff. I think they only contact me when it comes to like things that are not dangerous, things that won't like affect the household. They're like, "Hey, we have mail." I'm like, "All right, back. I can come and pick that up." Um, <laughs> and she don't get the mail emails, but I get the mail emails. So I'm like, "All right, cool. I can, I can take that." Um, so she was supposed to go to court virtually, and. We had sent in like the the CDC moratorium thing, like a while ago, like three times actually. Cause we like, listen, we don't have the money. We gotta stay here. We gotta figure, we gotta keep finessing. We gotta keep figuring this out. And she did that, and they was like, yeah, we heard we we heard you, but f it, we took on the court. So we we're like, damn, that's crazy because this is gonna really put a, a damper on things if we don't have a house to live in. So Melissa was kind of like that morning like damn like oh my god like we about to get evicted like i'm gonna go to court what do i say i don't say the wrong thing they might be like damn y'all are black y'all gotta leave and shit right so i'm like okay babe way all the options that could possibly happen like what are the worst things that could happen like we get evicted sure okay that's bad but i think a lot of steps come between that and getting evicted we have a lot of things in place so that even if we were to get evicted we still are on a good footing we can still go to atlanta we can still have money as far as investment house we can move to philadelphia and live in investment property so we could So, yeah, uh, as you can see, Melissa does not want to move to Philadelphia. So that's kind of where we are with with that. Now, so, again, fake freaking out. Melissa gets an email that morning like, yo, what? What? that was last week Monday, right? That's crazy. That's I feel like that's, it was so long ago. That was literally last week Monday. They were just like, yo, we canceled it. They canceled the meeting. So at this point, I'm like... It says that it was, it said some legal term, and that term essentially would mean that they dropped the case. Oh, so right. So allegedly the case was dropped. Now, we don't really know what that mean, um, because right now I want to say we're God's favorite. However, I don't know what, I don't, I don't really know if we his favorite yet until I know if the case is really dropped. Because wouldn't that be crazy if they dropped the case and we don't have to pay $20,000 in rent? That dropping the case don't mean that they probably just put it to collections or whatever. But I mean, listen, I'm okay with that because once it's a collection, you don't got to pay that. So, I mean, like, legally, because this is what I learned about collections, right? I've been through the process of collections uh, with Prada when I did some crazy shit where I tried to like buy it and then return it and then it didn't work. So, I said racism. Um, when I did that, I found out that the when you have your stocks, when you have your, your uh, whatever goes to collections, they pay. They like how I put this. It's funny. it's like wholesaling, which is hilarious to me. It's wholesaling your stocks. Your I keep saying stocks. What is it called? Debt. Uh yeah, wholesaling your debt. So the debt collector will pay a certain amount of money to the person who has the debt. So like let's say that I owe we owe money to I don't know let's say um T-Mobile right. Let's say we owe two, three thousand dollars, five thousand, ten thousand dollars to T-Mobile for whatever reason. While obviously we was wilding on phone bill, watching mad porn, and we owe ten thousand dollars. The debt collector will come and be like, "Listen, I'll buy, I'll, I'll pay you four thousand dollars if you give me the right to this debt." They, they go, "You know what? Fine, we'll take the four. Cause right now we're getting zero. We ain't getting nothing from it. So fine." 
then the debt collector will come after you for the 10 and then they'll settle with you for less than 10 like eight nine or six because they still make money on the debt that they bought from the other person it's and that's why you don't have to pay it because you no longer i owe them money the first person they already gave it away so i don't even owe them any money anymore and this new person i don't really owe you money either you're just trying to get money out of me on behalf of the other person so technically i don't owe nobody no money now it will be on my credit but if you really finesse credit, it should be removed too. So if you know the game, this is how you get out of all these type of things. And that's where we are right now. Shit's getting kind of crazy. Like I said, we're learning a lot. We're finessing out here. We're trying to get to, like, you, you heard the intro. You heard the intro. We are trying to get to billionaire status. And to get to billionaire status, you got to finesse a lot of these crooked stuff that's in the way. You got to get out the way because they be trying. They be trying it. They don't tell nobody about all of these things. They don't, they just... How is it that how is it that in school you never learn about debt and collections? There's no finance classes. How is that how is there no finance classes up until what maybe high school? Maybe? Maybe after that? Like there should be a class that's strictly on how stocks work, how taxes work, how debt works, how collection works, how money's printed, inflation. Like I guess that we do we have economics in in uh, what is fake economics? We have it in high school, but it's like Macro. The- uh yeah yeah it's, really it's like what is gdp like, i don't give a fuck yeah. that's like a my taxes and when i go to the, when i go to find my taxes at h&r block and say hey i know gdp of america they're gonna be like that's cool you owe me twelve thousand dollars for taxes i don't care about the gdp yeah, they don't teach you how to manage your your own personal nothing finances. right no personal finances maybe, I just, maybe if the teacher felt like it and even then they'll just tell you to make a budget right and that's what i'm saying i knew you there should be a course or not a course but like a class that you guys have in school listen i'm i'm people already know this right people saying this for for years that they need to have this in regular classes i think it's funny because i've talked about it before i think on here where i have i was talking to a lawyer and she was telling me that when she grew up it's so crazy so she has a sister who went to a school in my area which is spellman cardinal spellman in, uh, in the bronx right and herself the lawyer she went to like uh not private but like what those other schools that's not private but they like, like um not Catholic schools. It's kind of boring. Yeah. She went to charter school, right? Now, it was away from here as far as where it was located at. And she was like, yeah, we had all the things that you talk about school should have. We had them. We were going on, you know, trips to learn about finances and taxes. And we had all the different sports to play. We, we could have tennis, basketball, racquetball. We had volleyball. We had, mind you, this is like middle school, high school stuff. And she was like, yeah, we had, they taught us all of these things. Law, they had classes for that. And I'm just like. That's crazy because that should be that should be the bare minimum for, that everybody gets. But then it's kind of like if everybody got that, then they couldn't finesse you because every Monday, Melissa and I we do our ta- our uh, our finances, right? And I post it on my Instagram. So money is made off of you not knowing that people are robbing you. That's how money is made for the most part. Like the fact that you don't care about where your money goes is why people are making money off of you. They have, they literally have on their their line budget or whatever you want to call it, their revenue sheet, whatever you want to call it. Well, it will have like, okay, subscriptions. 80% of people don't use subscriptions but still pay for every month. And you, they they account for that. And I remember I heard an Eric Thomas uh, video. He was talking about why is it that uh, what is it called? Why is it that bank, not bank, gyms, gyms have a capacity of 300 people, but the gym itself will have 4,000 signed up members at that location. And why is that? Because they know that you are not going to the gym. So they don't have to worry about the full amount of people coming there because most people don't go to the gym when they sign up. They don't, they, they just pay every single month. They don't come to the gym and all they do is pay Blink or Capital. What's the other one called? Planet Fitness or well, all the other ones. They just pay them every single month. They actually, uh, they actually hate the ones. Like, they, they hate the fact that some people actually get the money out of right. the usage out of the memberships. Th- that's craziness. And like I said, that's, if you sit down, right, I, I, listen, you can hit me up. I have my own spreadsheet. We could talk about it. If you have if you do not follow and track your expenses, you are losing money every single month. I can I can 100% guarantee that is what's happening. I can guarantee it. You will sit down and be like, what the fuck? I spent $85 at the deli in a week? What the fuck? Bro, and think about that. Think how, think how simple that is. You go to school every day, right? Let's say that you know, you're in high school, middle school, something like that. You spend $10 a day at the deli every day. That's $70 a week. Just at just just on breakfast at the deli, 
And you're like, and it's crazy because people always go, how do I have that much money? I always feel like I'm broke, but I'm always somehow I'm spending all this money every single day, every week. And how does it happen? And let's not even include all subscriptions. You got Netflix, you got Hulu, you got uh, yeah, PSN, you might have that one. You got, what else another subscription you might, people might have? Mm, they might have, oh, uh, Disney, music. Music, fact, music ones, all the video streaming services, all of the apps that you have on your phone, a little one that you kind of play but don't really play. You spending mad money every single month. And this is what I'm saying. They are nickel diming you or what is it called? Uh, death by a thousand cuts. That's what my favorite term for it is. Where it's like every single person is taking two, three dollars from you. And you just like, what? Then come to find out that you're paying twelve dollars a month also for your bank. To how many bank accounts you got. Then you got to pay that. And it's like, bruh. You just be sitting there like, when you start looking at it, you go, what the fuck? I, I guess I guarantee if anybody was to sit down and look at their finances, they would. It, you could save money every month. Let me not say save because I think that's the wrong term. You can make money every single month just by looking over your finances. And the reason I say make money is because you now will have more money to spend. So technically, you get that money back. That's, that's To me, that's income. You get that money right back and you can spend it however you want to spend it. But at least keep it. At least choose, all right, I'm going to now only spend X amount of dollars at the deli. I'm going to only spend X amount of dollars on Netflix. I'm going to spend X amount of dollars on, you know, taking girls out to the whatever. The whole course on just how to spend money. Bruh, this shit is crazy. Like I said, this shit is really crazy. And like I said, again, just sit down and you guys have, if you have a bank account, you probably have an uh, app. Just go on the app and just write down all your expenses. Just write down, okay, I, did, I made this. I made this. I did this. All right. And you go, what the f-? Like I said, me, I like to do it myself. I like a, I'm a do it yourself kind of person. I don't really like to use uh, Mint. I used to use Mint, but then I felt like, one, it didn't give me the stuff I wanted as far as the updated, like how quickly I could update my stuff. And then it'd be like off and it'd just be too much. So me, Google Sheets, built it myself. I'm like, I right, bet. I'm going to just put it in every single month and I'm going to see how much money I'm spending. And I was appalled. Not as much now because I've gotten it under control, but I'm appalled before, like absolutely appalled. I think I think it's really amazing what solutions you could kind of come up with for the things that you spend money on. Mm-hmm. Because one thing, my main thing is food. Mm-hmm. So vending machine, constantly going to the vending machine. I would go to the vending machine probably three times in a day, um, and I would do that every day. So that's twenty one times. Mm-hmm. And let's say it costs about two dollars each. Mm-hmm. That's forty. That's like that's like yeah, that's like forty two times forty two dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, spending on snacks in front of a machine every week. Jeez, every week? That's crazy. Right? So, I started buying snacks from Whole Foods in bulk. Mm-hmm. Right? It'll be like six uh, chocolate chip cookies for um, six little mini packs mm-hmm. for $3. Yeah. That's, I, you know what I was going to say, too? As, as you were talking, I'm thinking... If somebody was to listen to this, right, and they go, I'm going to just take that money, this is my suggestion, and put in a Dogecoin. Take the money you save that you, because let's say you save uh, money because you don't, you spend it, you buy food in bulk now, right? Mm-hmm. So instead of spending $40 a week on food, now you only spend like 20 or 25 right? Take that $15 a week and put in Dogecoin. And just watch your 15 turn to 25 You'd be like, what the fuck? That's crazy. And mind you. You would have lost that money that you just got. Now, not only did you keep it, it's growing and making more money by itself. It's like, what the fuck? I'm telling you, it's this is crazy. This is honestly, it doesn't even have to be Dogecoin. Mm-hmm. It could just be in like with if you have Cash App or whatever type of um, thing that is fractional investing, mm-hmm. you can put in money into Apple or money into things that you think. Yes, I agree. Grow. That's a bit more safe and not as volatile. Right. However, the reason I said I, I would that would definitely would not say that because it's like it's fifteen dollars you're gonna lose either way. Wait. It's fifteen dollars that you were that you were probably in your case you were gonna spend on food either way. Uh, okay. So now you put it in the Apple and Apple may make you for the month three dollars. And that's that's probably unlikely that you'll get three dollars in a month from Apple. I get what you're saying. So it's like roll at the same. Uh, so like I said, the reason I'm saying this again, it's not because Apple, not because that's a bad investing strategy. I think in terms of just kind of get some quick money back, you can see oh money grows. But I like I could have saved this and now I'm making money off it. I feel like it would be depressing for somebody to put fifteen dollars to not have to eat all the food they wanted to eat and then put that into uh, Apple and then make. Two, uh, 36 cents for the month 
So that's how I look at it. I'm like, just, and, and it's $15. It's not going to kill somebody. That's something like, I'm not saying put all your your whole check into Doge. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. So that's why I'm like, just take it, put it in the Doge coin, and now you're like, oh shit, my 15 turned to, because I'm like, you can double your money in a week mm-hmm. in Doge coin. So I'm like, your 15 turned to $30. And now you're 30 next, you turn into 60. And you're like, what the? I made an extra $300 this month off of Dogecoin, off of money that I was spending on Netflix and Hulu. Mm-hmm. So, like I said, that's what I would suggest. Because what we're doing with the money that we are saving, okay? We have decided that we are going to buy a kitten. Two dose. Those kit, Those kittenas. I don't know who we is. That's Donovan. Now it's Donovan. Now it's Donovan. Melissa's like, hey, so... So we getting a cat? What's up with the cat? We gonna we getting kittens, right? And I'm like, sure. He's like, oh, okay. Well, so I got I got the the place right here, the number, the time to, to get there. I'm like, but now she's saying nah, I'm buying a cat. Nah, I'm buying a cat. I said we should get one kitten. Let's talk about. Hey, can we? Get, she should get a brother and a sister. I'm like, yeah, we have to. We can't have one by itself. It's gonna be lonely. We have to have two. Now we gotta have two, even though she's not getting no kittens. Now it's this. So yeah, we decided we're gonna get some kittens. Um, we talked about this from when we were in Philadelphia. We almost bought one there. Uh, my, I, listen, if you've been here for a minute or if you know me personally, I want three dogs. That's my, I want to have a Siberian Husky, a Shiba Inu, and I want to have a Golden Retriever. Those are my three dogs that I want. Now, those are like, those are the things I want to get. As far as like kittens and stuff, I don't mind having kittens, especially now because where we are, it's kind of going to be like, damn. It would be nice to have some kittens running around. Be fun. You know, actually little funny kitten stuff that, you know, we had cat. Uh, we had kitty kind of miss her uh so once i find out whether or not i'm allergic to cats then i'll be able to see okay bet you know let's get some kittens so we're thinking about getting them and then i'm gonna have to sniff them to see how i feel uh we also realized that the house has been very dusty very very dusty dead skin i guess it is maybe flakes dry skin all over the house and that could be the reason why i've been sneezing i can't say for sure whether or not it's a cat until i sniff these kittens and then i'll know if that if I could have kids or not. So what? Yeah, I'm like there's no ventilation in here really. Zero ventilation. And then the way the windows are set up is that much air. No ventilation. So it's like then that shit get clogged. Those two that shit look crazy. It's crazy. This one and I think it's crazy because I don't feel like maybe because this one has we're in the bathroom like doing stuff with our body and it goes up into the thing. So listen that vent in the bathroom look crazy. But we had to clean it and now we you know uh, I think it, we, we're getting better. Definitely, definitely getting better. Uh, one thing I definitely want to touch on too, right? As far as like <laughs> black people, right? Because one of the I guess challenges I would say with how black people are perceived on television and I'm curious how you think about this too. Uh, I've heard that people, when they watch someone on television, like people in the hood or black people, whatever the case might be, they don't feel like they can look at a, let's say a Tiger Woods and say, I can, I can be that, right? They don't look at maybe a black doctor and say, I can be that, right? Because they feel like nobody in their area has done that. So it's almost like a celebrity, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, there are people who are trillionaires, but, you know, that's on TV. I can't do that, right? But then the – um right, so a lot of times I feel like what they want to see is they want to see – uh, what's his name? Uh, Young Thug B. A uh, on TV because they feel like they relate to him, right? So do you think it's better? It's my question. Do you think it's better to have people like Young Thug who grew up in the hood on television as representation, or to have people who are more, I guess, professional and can work in the workplace on television? So more like a Bill Cosby type of show as opposed to. Young Thug on television. Because I feel like if people in the hood go, well, I'm not going to be, I don't know no Bill Cosby. I don't know no people like that. I can't, I don't relate to that. So they decide that they're not going to pursue that thing. But then they'll see 
Young Thug or Jay Z or Kevin Hart, and they go, "I'm gonna do that. I could, I, I, I could see myself in him. I'm gonna do that." And so, so that mean that we should have more people like from the hood on TV, or should we have more people like the Cosby shows, stuff like that on television? I feel like I feel like you need both. Why? Because. To go completely to one side, I feel like it's unrealistic mm -hmm. because those are both part of the black experience, I feel like. So, I don't think it should be like frowned upon or looked down on if somebody wants to pursue music or comedy or entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't think that people should feel like it's unattainable to be a lawyer or doctor like i don't think you should go be like you know i'm gonna do i'm gonna be a rapper because i can't do this thing and you have a mm -hmm. so that's kind of that's kind of what i think i think that either one i can see i can see why people would like want to go either way because mm -hmm. i feel like they could both be beneficial and i feel like they could both also be kind of like disheartening maybe because it's like hmm. watching the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air or watching the Cosby show it doesn't really show you how they got to where they are mm -hmm. it's just they are this thing mm. so I think that's the thing that makes people feel a bit more uncomfortable because mm -hmm. you're only showing when you're here mm. okay that's a great point which is, uh, I don't know if you guys know, the Bamboo Project. That's, that's why we do what we do. But, yeah. Honestly, both, both are the same in that respect. I think that you're more likely to see how, because it's a person, an actual person, like Young Thug is a person as opposed to a character, I think you'll be actually able to see his development throughout the years. Well, what I mean by, I didn't, I didn't necessarily mean TV shows. I mean people that would be like Bill Cosby. Like, for example... I don't know if he still is, but the the CEO of American Express is black, and I don't think that people know that, and I also don't think that he's not seen. So it's like if he, but then it's like they don't want to be on TV. But even it have to be, it could be anything else. But I feel like so people don't aspire to those things because they don't see them as much as they see everything else. Mm. So I feel like. Would it be better to have more people like that? Because I said, I mean, I don't want to say that. And then I also think that it's not really, it's not linear. Like you can't, you can't, just because of your one thing doesn't mean you can't be the other. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because what I'm thinking, I agree with that. Because I think that, hmm. Hmm. I just always wonder if it's when I think of what more or less billionaires look like or act like, it's not as an entertainer. So, but I don't know if I have the stereotype of a white billionaire in my head. And that's why I think that. I mean, on top of the fact that we don't really have black billionaires who are not entertainers, there may be like one or two. But every other one of them is entertainment. So I feel like that's kind of something I, that's, I don't really like, like that either. You feel like um, when you think of a billionaire, you, can, you don't think of an entertainer? I don't think of a lot of class. I don't feel like I see them with like poise, I guess. Maybe. Maybe Jay-Z. Oh, you don't see them as billionaires, even though they are? No, I don't see them as what I think a billionaire would be. Okay. That's, I feel like a billionaire is like, I don't know my head, I don't know, maybe suit tie, type, like, like, always like, I don't know, maybe my view of them is just off. When I think of a billionaire, I don't really know what one looks like. So I don't have an image of a billionaire in my head. Yeah, you know what's crazy? It's what I think too. I think my view of a billionaire is what the media portrays the billionaires to be but what i what i know of billionaires that i've seen they look like regular people and you don't really know they're, you don't know they're billionaires because they usually dress with a t-shirt they be chilling 
they like they throw on maybe their brand yeah they wear like they might like like let's say grant cardone for example he might throw on a 10x shirt and like mark zuckerberg might wear a facebook hat like not even a hat maybe like 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 a t-shirt or something that says facebook on the back or like man something maybe like that or just a regular green shirt like they're not doing what i think people think billionaires do like you know they might buy a company they might buy i don't even know they might lobby a whole area to be demolished it's a lot of money but they just they're just not flashy and i feel like i don't know if that's because like i said all the billionaires i know that are black are entertainers so they are in front of tv all the time they're always talking they're always doing stuff on tv they're always like in the media and that's a part of the their appeal Mm -hmm. like that's a part of their image that they have to it, it helps them to propel themselves forward that makes them a billionaire yeah because i don't other than oprah i don't really know any billionaires that got to that point and even her i guess without having to be flashy she was flashy i feel like to other people like she would give people stuff yeah yeah whereas like, mm -hmm. like she's giving our costs right he, that's that's flashy now, she's not out here in the gold chain and doing all that but yeah giving out cards to people that's a lot so i mean yeah i'm gonna have to think about that some more because i definitely i just it was a theory it was a thing i saw on tv i was just watching it and i was just like people always want representation on television but then it's like of what of who who do you who do you exactly do you want to be on tv to represent do you want it to be jay-z who came from the projects who had to sell drugs to get there or do you want it to be the american express guy who i don't know his story but let's say that he went to you know studied in school all the time didn't do nothing really bad went to college worked his way up to becoming ceo like which one of those platforms do you want and do you only want the life of jay-z because you see it on tv is that it so you know i wonder about that uh the last thing for life update i feel like i had did this i started doing this today um i bought a journal and uh i think i think i would suggest for everyone to buy a journal i think it's the best purchase i've made in a while i think other than a house obviously um and the reason why i say that is because i think it makes you more conscious about what you're doing uh, it's very similar to what like I said with my finances. When you start writing down what you're thinking, what you're doing throughout the day, then you start to see like, oh, okay, this is what's happening now. This is what's happening then. And you kind of get to go, oh, okay, it's like it's like auditing your, your day-to-day life as opposed to just like your finances or something like that. Yeah, like, this is how I spend my time as opposed to right. how I spend my money. Exactly. And that's kind of what I got from it. So once I did that, or for, for today at least, I'm like, oh, okay, like I feel... I feel more productive. Like normally when I get up, the first thing I do for like months now is will be look at my phone. Like that is the first thing I do. And I made a conscious decision recently to go, you know what I'm going to do when I wake up in the morning? Now I'm going to just write, I'm writing something in a book. I don't know what I'm going to write. Uh, today I just wrote, woke up at 8.02. That's what I wrote. And I'm like, but I, that's going to be the first thing I do. I'm not going to touch my phone until I write in the book. And once I wrote in the book, I felt very different because I felt like when I sat and when I got, I wrote in the book, right? And I got up and I brushed my teeth, which I don't normally do every morning. And then I, I bought like a, um, I bought a tongue scraper for my tongue. So I was using that in the morning. Um, you know, I was just, I was just up kind of just like, okay, this is, this feels different. For the most part, when I wake up in the morning, what I'll do is I will lay in the bed, turn over with one of my eyes kind of open and like try and find the most comfortable position to hold my phone in so it don't fall on my face or on the floor. And I just look at my phone and I swipe and then 30, 45 minutes go by and I'm like 30, 45 minutes. And I'm like, all right, I think there's enough time to get up and I might fall asleep again. And then I'm like, shit, another 45 minutes went by and I wake up again. I'm like, damn, now it's 11 o'clock. I'm like, all right, let me drag myself up to get somewhere. And I go to the bathroom while I'm holding my phone in my hand, trying to look at stuff. And I'm like, bro, this is, I can feel how bad it is as far as being productive, but I, it's not, I was not stopping it. I needed something to help stop it. And I think journaling definitely helps. Uh, so, and on top of the fact that today uh, I went to the gym, which I've not done in a very long time. And they they opened up the gym again for us. I don't know why, how, like I said, we got, we're obviously God's favorite. Obviously God's like, you know what? I, I fuck with y'all. I fuck with y'all heavy. And, you know, we've been seeing Talk 34 everywhere. And this is kind of, last time we saw this, we bought a house. So, who knows what's going to happen next. But, 
like I said, I went to the gym. I didn't do nothing. I went to the gym. I walked on the treadmill for 20 minutes. That's all I did. Walked for like three miles an hour on the treadmill. And I'm just like, it's just something to do as opposed to just laying in the bed. And think about this. I might be on my phone for 45 minutes in the bed, 30 minutes, 45 minutes in the bed. Nothing gets done. And it's almost like in my, in my mind, I compare it to being on drugs where you just swiping, 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 hoping, hoping you get a notification, hoping somebody says something that's kind of funny, hoping that you see a retweet that's kind of crazy, hoping that you got a new subscriber, new follower, new comment. You're just looking for something to be like, oh, got something. Oh, check your Robinhood account. Oh, my money went up. Checking Chase. Okay, I still have money in there. You're checking. You're just checking stuff. You're just checking stuff. That's all you do. You're checking things that don't really mean nothing. You just check, 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 and then you, you stop, and then you go, okay, YouTube. I right, was on YouTube. Check, 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 check. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Check. Fuck. Nothing. Somebody definitely tweeted something right now. Check, tweet. check, 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 check. Oh, that was kind of funny. Ah, I knew it. I knew someone tweeted something funny on Twitter. Now I'm going to go back and check YouTube because it's probably a funny video on there. Check, 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 check. And you just watch. And you, then you'll watch all the. This is why I hate TikTok. Then you'll watch the reels and shit for another 30 minutes. And you just. This shit is crazy. This shit is so crazy. And I'm like. This. I, I knew I was in it. And I'm like, I got to get out of it. I just felt how bad it was. Um. So like I said, now. I'm not saying that I'm going to be in it out of it forever or how well it's going to go. But I know for day one, this, I would say it was a pretty good day. Um, I feel good. I felt good this morning. Um, and then I think what else happened today? Uh, as far as I journaled. Yeah. So now when I journal, I want to kind of write what I'm doing in the day. I just kind of want to write the time to do certain things. And I actually another thing that made me want to go and write in the journal was because yesterday i was looking at my f screen time right and my screen time on my phone for yesterday i think i didn't even check what it was for the like to get to the end of the day um i'm gonna check it right now i'm gonna check it to see what my actual screen time was because i think so let's see i want to see what my screen time was Cause when I checked it, it was already kind of high to begin with. So I want to see what it ended off with. So can I check? Today is Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So Monday. Oh wow! See this? Is this is what I'm saying. So Monday, I spent six hours and twenty-two minutes on my phone, right? And Sunday, I spent nine hours on my phone. Think this. Uh, just think about how crazy this is, right? I'm putting into perspective, right? You go to work for eight hours, and you get paid to go to work for eight hours. All the time you were at work, I was on my phone. Think about think about how crazy that sounds. I was this. If you put all the time that I combined all the time I picked up my phone, looked at it into one time. It's nine hours I sat on my phone. So that means that for you to go to work and get go to work and get paid, be at work, I'm on my phone for nine hours. Bruh. I woke if you wake up at eight, you're on your phone for nine hours out the day. You woke up that shit is crazy. Like that shit just sounds so crazy to me to be on your phone for nine hours doing God knows what. Like I could if I let's say I cut it in half. Let's not I don't want to be unrealistic and think, okay, I'm never gonna use my phone. But if I cut that in half. That could be four hours to do anything else. Anything else. I could be molly whopping. I could be studying for real estate. I could be exercising. I could be reading. I could be playing Call of Duty. I could be doing a lot of other things than just being on my phone. So I saw that. I said, you know what? I think my I think I was on, on Instagram for like four hours, I think, for the day or three hours. Some crazy shit like that. So I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to lower my limit on my phone to two hours for Instagram, only Instagram for two hours. Um, because I feel like for YouTube, it's kind of hard to tell how much of it is wasting time, how much is actually like learning stuff. But Instagram, I know it ain't enough for me to learn on Instagram. And I think that's crazy because that that's so insane to spend that much time on Instagram and get nothing out of it. Like damn near out of if I spend four hours on, on Instagram, I'm probably getting seven posts to send them unless that's funny. So I guess there's some value in the funny post of it. Um, and I might see one to one and a half cool things that I might want to buy or look to buy or even not even buy. I don't be buying shit off Instagram. Things that I would think I'm going to buy from Instagram I might see on there. So it's like it's just a waste of time. So now, you know, drum roll, please. For today, so far, I've been on my phone for three hours and 57 minutes and it's five o'clock. 
So I think that that is definitely a step in the right direction. And I've been on Instagram today for 38 minutes, guys. 38 minutes. I might be a new segment I'm doing. I might like pull up my screen time every Tuesday and see how my how it was. I, I, yeah, I might do that. Um, how does it feel? I feel I feel phenomenal. I feel great. You don't feel like you're missing out. I don't. I don't at all. Um, I mean, today I got to do some real estate studying. I got to go to the gym a little bit. I got to, uh, shit, shit, you know what I was doing. And then I um, brush my teeth. Like I said, I don't do that every morning. Got to clean my tongue. Which I feel like I, it's so funny because I woke up so early. I feel like I spent mad time trying to clean my tongue. Time that I could have been like, not that I could have been doing something else, but because I had so much time, I was so focused on cleaning my tongue. Like, oh, I'm going to do this this way. I'm going to try it this way. I'm going to do it this way. And it's like I had I didn't have to rush because I'm like I'm up at 8 o'clock. And mind you, 8 o'clock to me is late to wake up. Like, like I feel like if you really want to get to the bag, you got to be up at like 5. Honestly, I'd say 5.30. If you, really get to the bag. Like, if you really on your shit, 5.30 is when you get up. Get up before the sunrise. Um, but... I think that if you up by like seven, seven thirty, that's reasonable to be like, all right, I'm getting up early. Um, eight o'clock is like I should already have been eating by then, but whatever. I think that you know I'm just I'm three hours and fifty eight minutes so far. So that's today. Yeah, let me, let me close my phone before they start adding up this time. But I've been on. Let me tell you one more thing before I go. I've been on Instagram for thirty eight minutes and YouTube for an hour and a half. And see, that's what I'm saying. I was watching videos on YouTube that were mad long today i watched the interview when i was uh walking on a treadmill so that's like that honestly that time probably even less than that so i'm just i'm just happy i'm going in the right direction but that's enough for life update uh you know we'll keep you guys updated what happened next week with our life uh now episode playback oh i've kind of forgot about this but i can go here too you feel me so i saw a post on instagram and it was the D and B number. You know what? What's, what's, what is that, Donna? What's the D and B number? All right, boom. So pretty much, let's say that the D and B number is the FICO score for businesses. That's that's the best way I'll put it, right? And the guy, y'all know AJ. I talk about him every episode, all the time. He was posting that somebody he was posting the scores of somebody he worked with. I'm assuming, right? That's what it looked like. When we went to Atlanta, they said for us to get into the best, mind you, we found a building in Atlanta that we love so much. We want to move in there ourselves. Like we are, we want that apartment so bad. And I swear, if God find a way to make this happen, I don't know. What I'm I'm going to freak out. Like if we get the apartment that we want, oh my God. So they said for the business to be able to go into that building, we would need a 70 on our DMB number, right? Our DMB FICO score number, whatever, right? My man's AJ has his people getting 80s, 80s, 80s. And mind you, the lady that was there, she was like, yo, people can't even get a 70. She was like, it's so hard to get a 70. He got them getting 80s. And I'm like, bruh, if we get that 80 and we pull up, and go, oh, you got an 80 bet. Come in. Oh, my God. I'm about to melt. This is crazy. Like, I don't know how, what I'm going to do. So I, I sent the eye like, yo, bro, like eyes, because, you know, uh, we're supposed to be getting our credit fixed what's going on with that it's been like a, a minute you know we paid you like in february i'm thinking like yo what's going on he said he texted me back like yo you up next i said oh shit we up next oh my god i'm like we up next oh shit i'm like we about to get funding soon funding from aj and the money from george will be coming in soon too the money from george will be coming in probably within a week or two and melissa's finally getting unemployment again so yeah we just we just trying i don't know if y'all noticed it either because i noticed in the last episode a lot a lot of ums and us. I feel like I have removed like 90% of my ums and us in this episode. So I'm happy about that. Like I said, we're trying to make the podcast better. Another thing too, I don't know why. Maybe Melissa's titties is out. I got to check. But there's a there's a YouTube a podcast on, on our episode. There's a YouTube. No. There's a podcast episode number eight. For some reason, the last two days, it's been getting a lot of views. I don't know what's in it. I don't know why. It doesn't have a thumbnail. Nothing. Not really. Nothing's there. So I don't know how or why people are listening and watching that, but they they watching it. So I learned that uh, in the last two days. I don't know. It's just kind of funny. I don't know. If somebody, if somebody can tell me what's in there. Maybe I'll watch it. It's 55 minutes. I'm going to check it out. So, oh, I forgot the other thing, too, I want to bring up. The last thing of life update. What time? What time is it? Where we at? (laughs) 
to an hour and I think it's 12 minutes. That's what that says. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's something I really want to touch on for sure. Um, the, my, my best, my favorite, or my best gift that I got last week for my birthday was from my beautiful, phenomenal, amazing girlfriend. And it was that she and her mother had a very, very good conversation. And I sat here and listened to it. Well, honestly, I don't even know what they talk about so much, I, eh, eh. but it was more so just the fact that they were on the phone, like two high school girls in my opinion like oh my god what what, you want to know about that like it was to me it was it's something i always wanted always asked for because i'm like all i want is melissa and her mom to have a great relationship where they can just communicate all the time and just be like oh what's going on hey how you doing this that and the third that's that's what i always wanted right so last week it happened they were talking about melissa's melissa had asked her mom about like questions about her dad and stuff like that so I just think that they finally got to like talk about. She's like, "Well, you want to know that? Why you want to know that?" She's like, "Oh, mom, you want to know this?" You're like, "What? What you want?" And th- like I said, I'm I'm sit- standing here like they. I didn't. I don't feel. I don't feel like I heard any. Um, like, I don't say animosity. Like any tension. I don't feel like I heard any tension in the conversation. It was just kind of like laughing and joking and giggling and stuff. So I just think that was really cool to see. Um, however, you know, things ain't really. It, things kind of changed a little bit. Uh, the next day, the phone call wasn't as positive, in my opinion, but it could have been, uh, you know, so it's like, uh, you know, like I said, to me, I think that was great the first, the other day, um, and I honestly don't, I think from Melissa's perspective, or Melissa's, from what I saw from Melissa in the second conversation, I definitely think that it was like wins from Melissa in terms of how she handled the situation i think that she has come a long way from where she was before if her mom and her didn't have the best uh phone calls i, I honestly i can't even say that either a regular phone call could turn into a bad phone call so i think that the fact that this phone call wasn't a regular phone call was a little bit more tension than that felt like she handled it very well um so like i said i was just happy was, listen great present for me for my birthday i was, I was definitely uh enjoying that but I'm also waiting to see when my beautiful, phenomenal, amazing girlfriend visits or sees her dad. That would be, whoo, by the vlog that. I have to see. Uh, listen, let me think all the views. Absolutely. Seeing my dad after 20 years of him not being in my life. You know, something like that. That would be a great thumbnail. And then you can have like a question mark over his face and say, dad, question mark, with a black person. I was like, are you my dad? Or oh, what's, that, what's, that, what's that video? You're not my dad. Do not my dad. You know, one of those uh, memes. I just think, like I said, I just think it'd be great for them to finally talk only because I really want them to just meet each other. Just like, just like talking. Same thing with her mom. Just have, have conversations. See what's going on. What's, what's up? Um, and the last thing from the update, not update, episode playback. I think it's funny how when my mom called, right? Before she called, I said like, oh, my mom's going to be like kind of throwing shots and throwing shade at my dad and i feel like she still did that because like y'all can see on the, i called my mom last episode and i was just like hey i want to ask you about a situation with my dad that happened you know back in the day what's your what's your perspective on it what's your pov on it and listen i don't think maybe it's in women's blood to be like he ain't shit i think it's in a i think in their soul only if they love you i think I think if the, I think that's what I think. I think, I don't want to say love. I guess maybe. I think if the mom or the woman really likes the guy and they're not together, that's when all the shots are thrown. I think if she don't care about him, they'd be like, nah, he was just, he was all right. He was cool. I ain't had no problem with him. He was up, whatever. I think that's when you hear that. But my mom always, always throwing shots. Listen, mom, I know you like him. I know. That's it. It's a kryptonite. You say you don't, you say you don't know. I think it depends. It depends on what's being said. In terms of what? Or what happened. Maybe. Why you say that? Because I'm like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like in some situations you can hear, like, actual, like, like pain and stuff mm-hmm. about what's being talked about. But in sometimes, it, and I think that's different than being petty. So that's what I think. Right? I believe if there's a new man right and the woman is happy with the new man then when she talks about the old man it's always gonna be like yeah i mean yeah he used to do some you know shit like 
So I didn't like, I didn't really like a lot of things he did, but it's fine, you know. He was around, he was there. When he wasn't there, he had his own things going on. I feel like the conversation changes once the woman's with a new guy that she loves. Me and Spicy now. With who? With who? Spicy. I don't know what you're talking about, but I just, that's what I feel like. I feel like. Okay. Well, we just cut this part out. Sure. Because he's talking about your mom. She's with you. So are you assuming that your mom still. Yes. Oh, okay. She's, I mean, she more or less is like, more or less kind of says it. So, and like I said, I, it's weird because it's not, it's not the overt feeling of like, oh my God, I want to be with him. It's more like a, oh, I don't like that. I, fl- and I like him. I don't like that. I don't like that. I like him. It's more like that. Um. So, yeah, that's what I think. I noticed that I've, with women, they tend to be more harsh on the guys that they like when they can't have them and when they don't care about you anymore and they're indifferent it's more like they take the neutral side of every situation that happened in the, in the past so if your dad was let's say he didn't bring diapers to the house it would be like yeah he didn't bring diapers to the house but you know either this guy that i'm with did or they'll say that i don't know why he didn't bring diapers to the house you gotta ask him i don't know figure that out ask him they don't, as opposed to like, yeah, you know, your dad never brought diapers to the house. Every time I would call him, he would never bring them over. And it's like, damn, what's up? Where's all that coming from? Why can't you just say it with, with, what's all this extra emotion coming from in this conversation? So I think that that comes from when a woman still wants the man. That's what I think. What do you think, Melissa? Why are you asking what I think? Because you have a child. So I wanted to know what you think about I this. have a child? Yes. Who's my child? I don't know. Don't, like, oh, you, oh, don't tell him? Okay, I won't tell him. All right. She, tell, she don't mean to tell you that she has a child. So. So let's say you don't have a child. You said what? The kittens aren't here yet, so I don't got no kids. Nah, you don't got no kids, Melissa. What about what about Jabril? You can know your child now? That's crazy. You gonna act like you don't have a son? That's crazy, Melissa. You don't have a you don't, the child you gave birth to, Melissa. You wow, that's crazy. You don't even know she's a child. That's crazy. You forgot? You have a child? You gotta think about it? Oh my goodness. I can't tell you please. <laughs> I don't know what to say right now. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, let me stop. Can't say that, Melissa. I know, because I'm like, what if somebody's name is Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um Oh my god. Oh wow, you know what's crazy? Did you turn this camera off after you did, right? After you were getting, you know. Yes. <laughs> I was making sure. So. The uh, Yeah, I think it is. I just want to make sure that it was close. So, I mean, obviously today, I didn't even say what the topics were going to be. So, as far as you guys know, there are no topics for today. There okay. Are, but, you know. Right. As far as you guys know, there's none. Um, But, like I said, we're still getting back into. Uh, I don't want to say that either. That's not true. Oh. I was gonna put that on the wholesale video. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, but you spoiled it now. But I mean, yeah, that, uh, people, people who are who are here, if you listen to the podcast, you get some extra juice on the side. You get to learn some of the behind the scenes of what's going on in our life. If you're not here, if you don't only watch the wholesale videos, so. But I think for the most part, that would be it. I'm trying to think of. Oh, I knew I forgot some spicy stuff. Some razzle dazzle on that thing. All right. So last week, y'all know the vibes. I told you who's coming to the house. I told y'all. Why is it not on here? Can you go up? I don't think this is the right. Can you go to episode 58? I think I put it in the wrong. Oh, you don't have it on yours. I might have wrote it in the wrong one. Damn. It's at the end of the podcast. I mean, what you doing? Damn, that would have been great to talk about. Bro. So oh man, listen, I'm gonna give you guys the quick and then I'm gonna make sure I put it the first episode. I'm gonna put it the first thing to talk about next week. But I met my, uh, my cousin's now boyfriend. Okay? Now, here's the cliffhanger. I'm gonna leave it with you guys, right? I believe the only reason why they are dating. 
currently is because I asked him, are they dating? I don't believe, I didn't believe at first. Melissa, Melissa, we talked about it. Don't put this on me. No, no, Melissa's fault. I was under the assumption that they were actually dating before they got to my house. Now, I'm going to ask, I'm going to call her and ask about this because I don't know. I'm going to be like, yo, did you lie? Did you lie to me when I asked you that question? Were you li- are you a liar? Because when I asked, they were like, yeah, yeah, this is my girlfriend. This is my boyfriend, right? Yeah, we've been dating and shit. And I'm like, huh. But then Melissa, my phenomenal, amazing, amazing girlfriend, brought to my attention that they might have came up with that on the spot when I asked the question. Just to make it seem like they actually dated when they're not. I have a problem with that. I'm not really cool on that. They're dating now. Maybe. Because obviously she ain't, he ain't go. So are they really? Because I'm like, at this point, if you if you were supposed to go and you ain't go, you gotta call her. I got it. I got to be like, yo, what's going on? So. After the yeah, facts. I'm gonna be like, yo, what's going on with this? So, like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let y'all. I'm put, I'm, I'm gonna put it at the front of next week's episode. Stay tuned, uh, for next episode of Dragon Ball Z. So, you guys know the vibes. We will be back here next week. Listen, early, hopefully, because I'm, I'm, I'm journaling now. Okay, journal, Donovan, a journaler. Okay, I'm a journalist. Um, we welcome in guests. We shoot between 10, 12 on Tuesdays. Honestly. I'm going to stop saying welcoming guests. If you want to come on the podcast, you know the vibe. You can hit me up and ask to come on. It is what it is. This is the last time I'm going to say welcoming guests. Welcoming guests. We shoot between 10 to 12 on Tuesdays. Hit me up if you're trying to come on. If you haven't already, go check out our social media. Mine is Donovan Gray. D-O-N-I-V-A-N-G-R-A-Y. You have the beautiful, phenomenal, amazing girlfriend, Anita Byrne. A-N-E-T-A-B-U-R-N. We have six different projects. Okay, we got the full project. We got the clothing project. We got the music project. We got the fitness project. We got the sports project. And we have the Bamboo Project podcast, which you just finished listening to right now. And you know what it is. Hashtag Bamboo Project 2021. We going up all year. You know the vibes. Okay. And with that being said, Bamboo Project out. Terrible. Terrible with it. It's terrible.